Hey everybody, Archie here. There we go. I'm opening up my Diet Pepsi because I'm a professional. So, this stream doesn't have a particular point. I just felt like doing a live stream since it's Sunday. Uh, I'm going to probably be on Becklaw's podcast tonight, as I normally am. Um, probably going to be on a bit more now, uh, consistently, just because uh, Undertow's taking a bit of a break from it, so... Uh, God bless Undertow. I uh, hope you're doing well. Um, yeah, so he's just kind of taking a break. So I'll probably come on as uh, the more regular guy for a while at least. Uh, so let me think what else is kind of happening. Um, I think that's about it. I might be on Arady's channel tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. We'll see how that goes. Uh, fingers crossed. A good time to go out and uh, shill for myself and that sort of thing. And uh, shilling is the way uh, Canada was built, I guess you could say. Although not at all. Ugh. So I figured, uh, let's talk a bit about just what's going on in the world at the moment. So there's a lot of news recently. Uh, mainly, I guess I just wanted to talk about the French election. That's kind of the big thing at the moment. Um, and the oncoming disappointment. <sighs> I think we all have to realize at this point in time, uh, Marcon is going to win. Uh, there's pretty much, I, I can't see any way that he's going to lose at this point in time. And I know that's really depressing. And I know that that is, I don't know, it just sucks. But honest to God, I don't see any way he can not win at this point in time. Uh, he's just has such a massive lead. Uh, the last polls I saw had um, something like, I think it was like 20 or 30 points. No, sorry. Uh, he was up 20 points. He was at like 61 and Marine Le Pen was at 39. So I can't really see how he can win at this, uh, how he can lose at this point. Uh, even the whole big thing with, uh, I don't know if anybody's seen, but there was a, a big scandal where... Russian, and I use that term sarcastically, Russian hackers uh, hacked his, his campaign stuff. And uh, I don't know. I haven't seen anything. No one, I think, has really um, been able to dump a lot of the stuff on the internet yet. But yeah, uh, I'm sure there's a lot of really... just kind of shady shit going on there, but we don't know anything about it yet. Uh, hopefully we'll find out about that kind of thing eventually, but it's going to be a while. Um, so we have that. But yeah, uh, Marine Le Pen is too low. What's interesting though and kind of hopeful is she is dominating with the youth vote. Uh, the youth, particularly like the actual French youth, overwhelmingly support Marine Le Pen. Um, I forget what it is. Like 60 or 70% of young actual French voted for her. I think in the first round, even when there was like five candidates, she might have gotten a majority or almost a majority of the actual French youth. So, I mean, that's a good uh, sign. What what actually is, is really screwing them is the eternal, the eternal boomer. Uh, Marcon is loved by the eternal boomer. Uh, the youth like uh, Marine Le Pen, though. And, yeah, so there's no way she can win. On the bright side, though, the actual... She might win a majority of the actual French vote. Like, uh, and I, I don't mean the people who live in France. I mean the actual, like, ethnic French vote. She, she could very well uh, win a majority of that. Um... Let's see, people are questioning whether I'm Jewish or not. I don't know, I've had genetic testing done. Uh, I guess I'll go over it again. I'm 40% uh, British, 40% uh, English, 23% uh, Franco-German, 5% uh, Scandinavian, and the rest is broadly Northwestern European. So um, I had no Jewish. I think it was 2% on the sign. They couldn't determine what it was. But that's pretty normal. No, I had no Jewish. Uh, genetic. Uh, genetics. 
Yeah, France is, is a fucking disaster at this minute. Deathbed demographics, etc. The only um the only good thing that'll come out of this election is I think the Fifth Republic is basically doomed at this point. France is very prone to having uh, like when politics go wrong in France, it normally leads to a complete collapse of society. Like basically the last time this happened was during the Algerian crisis. Uh, for those of you who aren't aware, basically Algeria had a larger settler population and just because of where it was, uh, it was kind of considered part of metropolitan France. Like it was considered basically to be as much part of France as like Marseille is or the southern part of the country is. So, uh, I'll, there is a massive movement against leaving, uh, against pulling out of Algeria. And it led to a lot of terrorism on, uh, from far right groups and then counter terrorism from far left groups. And there was just the whole thing was just crazy. And basically, Charles de Gaulle was given power and he basically, um, France very briefly became a, uh, military dictatorship while he resolved things and when he was in power he established the fifth republic and the fifth republic basically greatly centralized power in the hands of the president and made a much stronger executive which is probably the best republican government france has ever had uh, charles de gaulle was personally a monarchist he was an orleanist actually but uh, he was unable to restore the monarchy when he was president just because the will wasn't there so he he tried to set up the presidency as basically being a monarchy uh that was kind of his goal when he was in power and it didn't it, it did form the most effective french government of the 20th century so that's all kind of interesting but yeah my point is very often france has these collapses i think something you have to keep in mind about france is france has pretty much always had uh the strongest far right and the strongest far left in europe italy is pretty similar italy normally has a pretty strong far left and far right uh but the far left in france is is very strong like you had elections in france where the french communist party actually came in first now the french communist party was a little bit different it wasn't actually allied with the soviet union it was kind of um, an independent communist party that was a little more moderate. But you did have a communist party win French win the elections in France. Uh, you also have uh, the National Front has long been by far the largest far right party in Europe um, by a significant margin. And keep in mind, the National Front is now the largest party in France. Uh, I think that's pretty much unarguable at this point. It's larger than the Conservative Party. It's larger than any one of the socialist parties. So that's not insignificant. Um, plus, France also has like the highest percentage of positive atheism in the world, uh, or one of the highest rates of positive atheism in the world. It also has one of the highest rates of, um, what was it called again? Um, traditional Catholicism in the world. Like most of the world's SSPX members live in France. So France is a country that's always had these very severe divides. And these kind of divides often lead to a very unstable society. Um, so I don't think the Fifth Republic will can or will last much longer. I think in a lot of European countries, what you're going to see is as the population realizes that they can't solve things for the ballot box, they're increasingly just going to have to turn to bullets. Uh, because you have elections that are just obviously rigged, like when Hofer lost. And then you have elections like this, where the system is basically set up. Well, it is set up. Um, when they change France's electoral system from first past the post to, sorry, from proportional to runoff, uh, it was changed solely, and they said this at the time, to prevent the National Front from ever getting any real political power. Like, they literally just created the current political system uh, to exclude what is pretty much the largest single party in France. And that destabilizes the country. And I think you have to keep this in mind whenever 
um, we, we fail to win an election. Like maybe, like people, a lot of people see the Dutch system at, uh, election as being a complete and total failure. But I actually kind of see it as a success because when the largest political party in a country isn't represented in parliament, that destabilizes the country. And that's something that I think is going to increasingly happen in Sweden, for instance, because the, uh, what should I call it? The, what, what's the party called again? The Swedish Democrats are the largest political party in Sweden and they have no representation in parliament. And what often happens in these countries is the center right and left will form a coalition government rather than the, the right will never form a coalition government with uh, the far right. It just doesn't happen. Like uh, Francois Fillon or however, you, whatever his first name is, backed Macron instead of uh, Marine Le Pen, despite them theoretically being more similar ideologically. Because uh, that's just kind of the way things work in the developed world at the moment. And as I said, I think it does destabilize the political system enormously when you have these large uh, political parties with zero representation. So I think that's something to keep in mind. So there's kind of some other stuff going on in the world I figured I'd talk about. So the situation in England is very interesting. Uh, Theresa May called a snap election, which we're going to have, I think, next month. It kind of came out of nowhere, but yeah, so there's going to be a snap election and there's going to be a vote. And from what I've seen, it looks like the Tories are going to win a landslide. Like it's, it's, I've seen them up to 50% in the polls. Keep in mind, Britain's the first past the post country and it's a more than a two party system. It's like a three, three or four party system. And you have the, the conservative party at 50% of the vote. So they will win a massive, massive majority. So uh, sorry for being a total noob, but what game is that? Uh, this is Homefront the Revolution. Uh, or as Dark Side Phil calls it, the worst game he's ever played. Um, it just doesn't require a lot of focus. So I, I like to play this when I'm doing a live stream. I actually find it easier sometimes to talk if I'm doing something like this with my hands. So yeah, um... So at this point in time, UKIP is basically dead at the moment. Um, if you look at the polls, UKIP is going to basically lose most of its support. Uh, they're down to something like, what was it again? Um, they, they, were, they were at a high of 15 and now they're down to like 5%. And I think the reason for that is, um, I'll answer your question in a minute, Jelly Crocodile, that the Tories, as much as the Tories suck, the Tories, it looks like, are going ahead with Brexit. And that was kind of the reason that UKIP existed, was to have Brexit done. And now Brexit's done. I think a lot of people are going back to the Tory party and they're just going to try and move it rightward. So I think that's kind of the current trajectory that's going to happen at the moment. So... I don't know if that's a, a good thing, a bad thing. I'm not sure how you want to think about that, but. The Labour Party may effectively cease to exist as a major political force after this election. Which I think can only be a good thing. So they're basically dead at this point. Uh, the Labour Party is like at do not resuscitate. Which is good, because as Millennial Woes put it, the Labour Party is the ultimate uh, enemy of the English people. Arjun, off-topic question. What is your opinion on Sweden or our situation? We are basically Tumblr, the, quest, the country. We ignore real problems to talk about non-issues such as racism and sex. Now, I'm going to be perfectly honest, Paranoid Skeleton. I actually don't read... Excuse me read that much stuff about uh, Sweden just because it's super depressing. Sweden is just such a depressing country. I, I don't even really know what to say about it. The thing you have to keep in mind with northern peoples, and my friend Abstract and I pointed this out, northern peoples are just extremely conformist. <coughs> um... 
Oh, by the way, I have an announcement. If anyone's Canadian here, I am going to be at Anime North, actually. Uh, I don't know if anyone here has ever been to Anime North or knows what Anime North is, uh, but I will be going to Anime North on the Saturday. Uh, sorry, the Sunday. So I don't know if anybody is going there. Uh, shoot me a message or let me know, and uh, we can meet IRL there, and that would be kind of cool. So just a, a brief note. But, um... Yeah, the thing to keep in mind about uh, Northern peoples is they're extremely conformist. Asians are also like that. If you ever noticed with Asians, the first generation is actually pretty based. The second generation is normally more paused than the white people are. <coughs> because they're just super uh, conformist. So, like, if, if Asians live in um, a liberal democracy, they will completely conform to the liberal democracy. Like, if you notice, the, the worst Tumblrites and the worst feminists are normally a second-generation Asian women. Uh, second-generation Asian women are almost always worse than, like, white women. They're, at, like, they're just awful. They're, they're just unbearably shitty. And that's just because Asians are just, like I said, they're super conformist. Uh, they're the most conformist people on earth. So, like, yeah, if they live in a base society, they will be based. If they live in a paused society, they'll be paused. Argent, could you answer my question? I, I don't really have an answer to that question. Um, I, I have no idea. I think Britain has better odds than Germany. I think Germany's fucked at this point, and I don't really have any clue what Germany can really do to get out of its current situation. I just think they're fucked. <coughs> but, uh, yeah. Oh, uh, let's see. Inferno Launcher. Cool. I think I have that already. Uh, I'll upgrade the assault rifle, I guess. Reload and weapon select speed, weapon stability. Can I upgrade any of this stuff? Oh, uh, the upgrades are kind of shitty. Um, maybe I'll switch back to the battle rifle <coughs> as my secondary weapon. Arjun, do you think Germany and Britain can be saved? Their demographics are similarly... Po I, I just answered that. I think Britain can be saved. I think Germany's completely fucked. I can't see Germany getting out of this current situation. I think... I can't... I think Germany's fucked. I don't think it can be saved at this point in time. I think it's it's game over, man. Game over, man. Is this the shitty Red Dawn game? Oh, let's see here. I actually think this game isn't that bad. Like, it's a first-person shooter RPG. I, I didn't see why people thought this was that bad. I mean, it's it's not, like, great. But as far as, like, open-world FPSs go, this wasn't a bad game at all. I played way worse stuff in the past. Should we nuke Germany from orbit then? Yeah, Germany is just screwed. If I had to say the countries that were the most screwed, I would say Sweden, France, Holland, and what's the other one? Sweden, France, Holland, and Germany. And then the least screwed in Western Europe would be Denmark. Uh, okay, Denmark is the least screwed. Spain. Britain. Or uh, Britain's kind of mixed. I'm trying to think what other ones there are. Thoughts on Maxine Bernier? I already voted, and I voted for Kelly Leach um, for a variety of reasons. But yeah, she I've already sent in my ballot, actually. So that uh, that is done, actually. Oh, let's see here. Sweden is probably done for. Sweden is fucked. Denmark is actually in a pretty good state. 
Uh, Denmark, probably, aside from France, has the strongest far-right party in Western Europe. Uh, the Danish People's Party is actually the... I think it's the second largest or the largest party in Sweden. And it's a, a partner in the governing coalition. People are saying Sweden is the least... Sorry, Switzerland's the least fucked. Yeah, but Switzerland barely counts. Switzerland's kind of its own thing, off in the middle of nowhere. <coughs> yeah, Switzerland's a really nice country. I like it. Um, it's it's not really relevant though. It's just some like random country in the Alps. Swiss lives matter. I don't know. Austria is the least fucked. Yeah, Austria, I forgot to mention. I don't know. If, if you want to consider Austria Western Europe, Austria is very really low on the list. Austria is really not that paused. Like, as far as pause goes, Austria is not really that bad. Austria is a pretty conservative country that doesn't have a huge minority population. Um, the, the, the Austrian People's Party is all... Sorry, the Austrian Freedom Party is actually pretty strong uh, compared to a lot of other kind of far-right parties. It's kind of funny, some of the Swiss-Swedish Democrats' policies and why they're considered far-right. Like the uh, the Swiss... No, sorry, the Swedish Democrats want to like, implement a, like, a pedophile database. Like, a sex offender database. And that's like seen as a far-right controversial policy uh, for some reason. And that's just how paused Sweden is. Again, it would be interesting how paused Toronto is, like just Toronto versus all of Sweden. That would be like an interesting comparison to see. Okay, let's see here. I don't even know how I'm going to damage this thing. Oh, okay, that's okay. That's mine. So, okay. So I don't have to damage it because it's on my side. So I have to hack this. There we go. First one hacked. Okay, let's see here. Toronto has the late stages of AIDS. Toronto is literally, I don't know if it's the most paused city on earth, but it's really, yeah. Melbourne is in Auckland have the same problems as Toronto. Yeah, Toronto's pretty shitty. It's um, based Indians and based Asians are are blinding people from the truth of diversity. Yep, they're super based, all right. That's why they um, they over they overwhelmingly vote. Uh, Toronto might be the most diverse city in in like a historically white country. I don't know. Is there one that's more? Is maybe I guess maybe Malmo's worst. I don't know. Uh, some were raped. There's a disabled woman that got raped, and then people protest. The state owned media called the protesters neo Nazis. The best thing to happen for Europeans is for living standards to get a lot worse. Yeah. Abstract says it depends on how you measure diversity. Which is, is very true. Race or national background. Uh, Toronto is the most diverse. I've seen articles about it. I don't know. It's, it's hard to tell. So yeah, I have no idea what the hell's happening with um, America at the moment. Arjun, can you tell us about Kelly Leach and why you voted for her? Okay, so Kelly Leach is a um, orthopedic a uh, pediatric surgeon from Ontario 
And she, what was it again? Um, and she was, uh, she's pretty much since she was, I think, 12 years old, she decided that she wanted to be prime minister. And she's worked her entire life to that end. So her campaign was kind of running as a, a she kind of ran as a right wing populist candidate. And her whole campaign was on Canadian values and trying to interject not really social issues, but I guess cultural and identity issues into the race. <clears throat> and kind of one of her, her big standpoints was that uh, we have, as conservatives, we have to talk about things other than tax cuts. So her big policy was screaming immigrants for anti-Canadian values, which really, like, it sounds, like, scary, I guess. But really, it just means, like, checking their Facebook to see if they posted, I pledge allegiance to ISIS. But checking people's Facebooks to see if they're active members of ISIS apparently makes you a neo-Nazi. So she's received just an immense amount of hate um, over that. So she had that. She had a couple other policies, uh, like just normal conservative stuff, a cap on government spending. Uh, what were some of the other stuff? Uh, she wants to uh, loosen self-defense laws, which was a big reason I voted for her. Uh, she wants to legalize like pepper spray and stuff like that. Uh, just a couple of other things. I mean, Kelly Leach is not like particularly right wing or particularly conservative. But like what what kind of made me support her was there's a segment. I have to put it back up. Oh, no, I had to delete it because of copyright issues. But CBC did a segment where they like basically said she was a neo-Nazi and that everybody um, in her district were neo-Nazis who voted for her and stuff like that. So I just decided to support her because... Everybody hated her and the people who hated her were fucking dildos. So I think that's a pretty good reason. But uh, yeah. <clears throat> so that's Kelly Leach and that's why I voted for her. Uh, my second choice was... What was the second choice? My second choice was Brad Troust. Now Brad Troust was, is a rice farmer. But he's like a super edgy social conservative who's like talk, called like pride parades degeneracy and stuff like that. So I voted for him for second. And then I voted for Pierre Lemire, who's like a social conservative ex army, like trad cat. Uh, for, I voted for him third. And then I voted for Andrew Shear fourth. Uh, Cause Andrew Shear is just not a bad guy. And Andrew Shear, um, I don't know. He has five kids. He's done a lot for the white race. Okay. Abstract is saying he realized a massive red pill. I th okay. Go on. Yeah, he's a rice mixer. I mean, he's like an edgy social conservative, so obviously he's a rice mixer. Abstract points out that the Jews are like the only ethnic group that shifts like a hunt like eighty percent from left to right in one, uh, in uh, on like an election to election basis. That's very true. Um, they are literally the most ethnically homogenous vote in a sense. I mean, blacks vote more overwhelmingly in one direction. But they don't really vote as a block in terms of their interests in the same way that Jews do. I think Indians vote conservative in Canada, but pretty much every ethnic group votes liberal. Uh, people are actually, it's actually surprising if you look at it, but not that many minorities vote NDP. Someone says Jews in France are voting for the Front National. Okay, the thing you have to realize about Jews in France is most of the Jews in France are uh, Sephardic Jews. And Sephardic Jews tend to be more conservative. 
and they tend to be um they don't have the same like hatred of europeans but yeah in canada the ndp don't really get that much uh of a vote compared to of the non-white vote compared to some of the other uh compared to the liberal party the ndp wish they could get more of the non-white vote but they just can't because they can never offer as much and because too much of their base is like white working class people i mean as with most western countries over time the white working class has shifted more towards voting conservative than voting uh socialist but even so <clears throat> uh horace finkelstein says that the uh, ndp are the party of the retarded uh college students now that's true actually i remember that from college a lot of the dumb people there voted for the ndp <clears throat> has to be some way to blow this thing up i'm out of uh explosives and i'm i don't have a uh rocket launcher with me uh let's see would a blunderbust hurt it maybe i don't know Oh, that's a pretty big glitch. Look at how bad that loading is. What the fuck? Okay, come on. Nope, blunderbuss doesn't work. David Hasselhoff was the true star of the film. Yeah, so Guardians of the Galaxy 2, I liked it. I thought the first one was a lot better, to be perfectly honest. Um, I thought the first one was a better movie. Uh, my issue with the second one is it just was too unfocused. It kind of felt like a Michael Bay movie. Um, I guess is kind of my uh, concern with it. Um, it just, it just kind of wasn't focused enough. I think it would have been a better movie if there is a bit more, uh, focus to it. Let's see here. Russia and China. Do you think Breitbart has served its purpose? Got no more time for civic nationalism? I know Breitbart is pretty based. Excuse me. Paranoid Skeleton asks about Amy Schumer. Uh, Abstract and I were actually talking about her last night. And he made the point that Amy Schumer is like such a crypto Jew because she doesn't look Jewish at all. She looks like some Bavarian, like homely Bavarian milkmaid. Like it looks like if you go into like rural Bavaria, you'd find some like random pleb woman there. Uh, let's see here. And that's kind of the, 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 the sad and kind of weird thing about Amy Schumer. People are asking what game this is. Uh, this is Homefront the Revolution. Or as Dark Side Phil calls it, the worst game I ever made. I actually kind of, like, I don't think it's that bad. I don't see how you could, like, even if, like, I can see not liking this game and just thinking it's, like, mediocre. I can't see thinking this is, like, the worst video game ever played. Like, it, it has some bugs, but it's, like, it, it turns on. I've played stuff, like, with way worse performance issues than this. Maybe you can put the games you play in the description. Yeah. Um. But, yeah, what was I thinking about again? Something involving Amy Schumer. Yeah, Amy Schumer looks like some homely... American, uh, homely Bavarian milkmaid, uh, but she's Jewish apparently, and it's just disturbing. It shows how far they've just kind of come with their breeding programs and stuff like that. The best place to get news is, uh, I get my news from Drudge. 
to be perfectly honest. That tends to be where I go. Which is where most people in these circles go. Just a lot of people are kind of dishonest about it. Uh, let's see here. What do you think of black people? Um, I think I've been pretty obvious about that in the past. Let's see here. Okay, fuck this. I'm just gonna switch this over to the rocket launcher. Cause I need that apparently. Ah, uh, California. Yeah, California is super pause. Blacks are a mixed bag. Um, the thing about blacks is the issue. It, it got a lot worse once. Okay, I don't jelly crocodile. I don't know how to answer that question. Uh, I don't have, uh, I don't know where to live in America. Uh, Abstract said Virginia Beach, and I trust his judgment in this matter. The Gibbs. The thing with blacks is you can manage them decently well, but you, you have to... Okay, Jolly, I have no idea. I don't know where to move in the U.S., uh, move to move to the northwest and start the Northwest Republic. Uh, let's see here. Night Sin's Dream says just read the demographics for each state and choose the whitest one. Yeah, but that doesn't work. So a lot of the whitest states are just shitty. Like um, like Washington State is like super paused. It's pretty white. So is Oregon. And both of them are just like two of the most paused states in the Union. Oh, I keep dying. But yeah, I mean, you can kind of manage blocks. The thing is, you need to... You need to show them, though, that, that you don't have a sense of humor towards their bullshit like south africa was able to maintain a very low crime rate despite their demographics and what was the other one um and like jim crow era america actually had a relatively low crime rate despite the uh demographics in the southern states the issue was twofold um kind of once they they started loosening a lot of the I guess you could say restrictions on various stuff that tended to change things. Um, um, I guess if you just kind of want an open-ended uh question on what do i think of blacks um as i think i've said in the past i'm a white nationalist and i'm also against race mixing so i guess i'll just repeat that in a little more obvious terms i don't always like to call myself a white nationalist just because of how retarded a lot of them are um and i just kind of don't want to be like associated with a lot of them but yeah i basically am de facto Uh, what do you think will happen to whites in South Africa? Uh, they'll probably get wiped out. More or less. Or they'll leave. The problem is no one like wants to let them leave. I think they're a very valuable resource. That was kind of an that was actually something Gert Wilders uh, basically supported a right to return. He wanted to let the uh, Afrikaners go to, to Holland. He was very much in favor of that. Uh, and that was one of the reasons they had to shut him down. Because if you had like a couple million boars come back to Af uh, Holland, the boars are pretty base. So the boars probably would have voted for like right wing political parties and they couldn't have that happen. So they're never going to let the boars go home. Uh, let's see here. Wait, isn't Holland the the Netherlands? Yeah, they're the same place. 
Holland just means Netherlands. Um, I forget why they're called different things. It's, yeah, they're the exact same thing. Uh, Abstract says liberals always want immigration except if it's bores. That's very true. Uh, probably the group of people who are the most hated on earth are the bores. I can't think of anybody who's more hated in the world than the boars are, to be perfectly honest. Holland is a province in in Netherlands. Yeah. Anyways, um, I just want to do a short stream. Uh, I'm going to head to church in a minute or two, so I should probably be heading off. Uh, I guess I'll just answer one more question before I go. Uh, Paranoid Skeleton asks, uh, who are the Boers? Uh, the Boers are the white South Africans who are Dutch. Uh, they're descendants of Dutch, Dutch colonists, and they're a fairly large minority in South Africa. Anyways, guys, uh, I need to head out. I just figured I'd jump on for a minute and say hi to everybody. I'm probably going to be on the Beckloff's podcast. Uh, let me just post a link to his channel. So I will be on this podcast probably at about um, 8 o'clock tonight. So see you guys later.